Hi there. Let's talk about some basic concepts related to Captivate's interactivity. What we're doing here in this particular module of the course is taking a high level view of the components of, of Captivate's interactivity so that you can understand how they all fit together and then in later modules of the course we're going to go back and examine each one of these things in more detail show you how you can use it or how you create it and work with it in creating interactivity. But first let's see how they all fit together, like a, a jigsaw puzzle if you like. I should mention at the outset here that a lot of people when they investigate Captivate's interactivity they either love it or they hate it. And uh, one of the reasons that some people criticize it is that they may have come from a programming background and perhaps when they look at Captivate's interactivity it doesn't go far enough for them. It doesn't give them the, the degree of control that they're accustomed to as a programmer and being able to do just about anything that you want. Now, there's a good reason for that. And the reason is that Captivate wasn't designed for those people specifically. In Adobe's arsenal of, of uh, or toolbox, if you like, of, of software programs, they have other programs that were designed for programmers and things like Adobe Flash, for instance. You could build e-learning with Flash and using the ActionScript programming language is very, very powerful and almost unlimited in what you can do. But Captivate was not designed to be Adobe Flash. It does produce, a capable of producing SWF output, the same as Adobe Flash, but it was designed specifically for people who were not programmers. So therefore, what you find in the advanced actions and variables that Captivate offers you is a sort of a reduced, simplified view of programming and scripting. So you don't need to be a programmer to get involved in creating e-learning and e-learning interactivity when you're using Adobe Captivate, which I think is a great thing. So if you're a programmer and you're thinking this is pretty lame compared to what you're used to, that may be the case. Just remember, this wasn't designed specifically for you, but would you rather have to create all the things that Captivate gives you uh, by hand programming? Would you rather have to go back and do closed captioning and make up your own quiz questions and, and a table of contents and all the other things? Captivate makes all of that very, very easy. So it has its place. Now, if you're looking at interactivity from in the Captivate view of the world, there are basically three or four things that it uses to create that interactivity. And the very first thing that we could actually discuss is actions. So I'm just going to look at a Captivate project here. Now this is a project based on a template that I use quite a lot when I'm creating courses for my clients. And I have a slide selected here, it's a blank slide. And if I go over to the Properties tab, then down to the Actions section of that tab, there's a drop-down, there's a couple of drop-down menus underneath that, and they're labeled currently No Action. And if I drop that menu down, I get a whole list of actions. So this is your first look, if you like, at Captivate's actions. Let's have a look at some of the actions it offers to us. One is continue. And all that does is continue playing the timeline. Open URL or file. You would use that one if you did want to literally open another website page or maybe open a file that is uh, in with the, the course content, maybe a PDF file that they need to read. Open another project and forget that one, that's a bit misleading. Captivate sometimes unfortunately uses naming for things that could be a little bit better done. That one, open another project, doesn't literally open the other project file. It opens the project's output. And this one, send email to, allows you to spawn an email from the end user's email program and maybe put in there who it's addressed to and, and a subject line, but it doesn't allow you to actually send the email automatically which is what a lot of people hope that it would do. Execute JavaScript. If you're a JavaScript programmer, you might find that useful. If you want to call up an alert box or open a window and specify the height and width of the window. Uh, execute advanced actions. Very useful. We'll be doing a lot of that. But notice also that some of these actions are actually disabled or grayed out. Why would that be? Well, it's because there's nothing there that it can actually act on. This one, execute shared action, would be great if there was a shared action in the project, but currently there isn't, so it's grayed out. Play audio, I can use because there are audio files in the project. 
but these ones show hide, enable, disable, are disabled, greyed out, because on this particular slide there are no objects that you can hide or show or disable and enable. So that's why they're unavailable to you. So when you see that, that's what, that's what it means. It's just that you need to create a different set of circumstances to have those available. Assign, increment, decrement, they have to do with things called variables we'll talk about in a moment. Apply an effect, that can be very useful. Exiting the movie, that can be useful. Doesn't always work, but it can be useful. Pause the movie, toggle a value between zero and one. Maybe toggle the table of contents in or out or the play bar to appear or disappear. And the show talk, hide talk, show play bar, hide play bar, lock the talk, so that nobody can click on it, unlock the talk, changing the state of objects now become possible since Captivate 9. All of these are actions, but we need to just specify they are single actions, sometimes referred to as simple actions, just one action. That's all they really, really do. So that can be very, very useful. You've got a list of 20 or 30 things there that you can make happen in Captivate, and that does provide you with a certain amount of scope. It might be a more limited palette than you would like, but it does allow you to create a lot of wonderful things. So actions are part of the Captivate toolbox for interactivity. Now, the next part that you need to learn about are events. Notice in this, these menus that we were looking at, they were called on enter and on exit. What does that refer to? These are actually the events or runtime events that are available for this slide that we have selected currently. So on the slide entering the timeline, you could make something happen. You could trigger an action to happen. And that's really what events are about. They trigger actions. In fact, triggers is another name for events. If you come from a different uh, um, programming background or a different e-learning tool, and you're now learning about Adobe Captivate, you may have heard the term trigger as an alternate name for what we're talking about here, events. So on entering the slide, I can have something happen, and on exiting the slide, I can make something happen. So these are just two events. Captivate has dozens of them. Different types of slides have different events. Different types of objects have different events. And the more that you learn about these events, We'll be discussing them in a whole module dedicated to events a little, a little bit later. But the more that you learn about them, the more creative you can be in the interactivity that you create. That's two of the building blocks. So we know actions, single actions in this case, and runtime events or just events. We call them runtime events because they don't happen when you're editing the project. Nothing happens then, but at running the project at that time, then they can trigger events to happen. The third component that we need to look at are variables. Now, what is a variable? Programmers already will know this, but we need to just explain it for those of you who may not be programmers. Sometimes people talk about a variable as being like a container, like this cup, and that when you, you can place a value into the variable, and so the variable stores the value. That's one way of thinking about it, but really um, programmers will argue about this and say that's not actually what happens. It's a system that stores the value and the variable just points to where the uh, value can be found. Does it matter how you think about it? I don't honestly think so. Uh, what's most important is that you understand a variable has a value and that variable knows where to find that value. So when you need to store something, you can put it in a, in a variable, and then when you need to get it back again, you can call it out of the variable or get the variable to retrieve it for you. Either way, variables are very valuable in interactivity. Sometimes we want to know the student's name, and we want that to appear somewhere in the project. We can display variables on the slides. We want to maybe use the value of a variable to alter how the interactivity happens. So once again, that's how variables can be very useful. Let's have a look at the variables that are available to us in a typical Captivate project. If I go up here to the project menu and then to the variables 
item, this calls up a dialog called the variables dialog. And the first type of variable it shows me are user variables. What it means by that is that these are variables that the user, you the Captivate user, can create and add to the project. So in this particular project I've got, as you can see, dozens of them that I've added to the project because of things that I wanted to do towards navigation or scoring or you know making something work dynamically. But that's not the only type of variable available to me in the project. If I drop that menu down, I see I also have system variables. Now, this is one of the things I really love about Adobe Captivate. In many authoring applications that I, I use, and I, I have quite a few because I, I don't always know when I go to uh, do a, a job for a client to build a course for them, you know, what they, they have in-house that they mandate that I have to use as the developer. So there's quite an array of e-learning authoring tools that you end up working with over the course of your career. The thing is, I keep coming back to Adobe Captivate because of values like this, this one here. Variables, system variables, in this case, tell me things about what's happening under the hood in the Captivate project at runtime. Uh, they have a whole list of what are called command variables, where when you put a value in these variables, it makes an action happen. That's very useful. You can jump to slides, you can um, raise the volume or lower the volume in the project, you can make things visible and invisible just by the command variables. You also have info variables. If you want to know the current date and display that somewhere, you want to know exactly what frame of which slide you are on. You can get the slide number, you can get the frame number. You can do uh, quite a few things just with those info variables. Then there's also quizzing variables. You want to know how many quiz questions there are in the project. How many did the user get right? How many did he get wrong? What was the user's percentage? All of these things are available to you from these system variables. Now, it's important that you realize that system variables are often read only. That means that you can see the value, they'll give you a value, but you can't always change the value. So if you don't like the score of the quiz, for instance, you can't go and change the quiz variable to whatever score you want. That's not going to be possible. So some AR read only, but they are still extremely useful and in many ways uh, they are unique to, to Captivate or the level of control you get here is unique to Captivate. Just recapping, we have actions. The ones that we looked at before are single actions and they're triggered by events. So if I have a single event and I can use that to trigger a single action. And then sometimes the action that I want to do is to write a value to a variable or get a value out of a variable. However, what if I wanted more complex interactivity than that? What if I wanted to say have a single event perform multiple actions? Could I do that? What if I wanted that those actions to be performed or not performed based on the value, say, of a variable? Could I do that? Yes, you can in Captivate. And that's where we get into advanced actions. Technically speaking, the actions that we've been looking at so far are not advanced actions, they're just actions. And that's what many programs actually just give you, actions. Captivate takes it to a few further steps with advanced actions. We'll find them listed under the project menu, advanced actions dialog. So now I, I come to this particular dialog it's a little more complex than what we were looking at before, but the first type of action that's showing me here are standard actions. And what a standard action is, is a, a type of action where you can execute multiple actions in a line, one after the other, but all from a single event in the project. It could be someone clicks a button. It could be that you enter a slide. That's the event that triggers a number of actions to happen and you just specify the actions. I might say, well, okay, when the user clicks this button, I want the movie to pause. I want to play a, an audio file, and I'll select an audio file from the, uh, the project there. And then I want it after that to go to the next slide. So I can have those three actions performed just with one click of a button. Or it could be that on entering a slide, 
I wanted to hide things and show things and set up a whole menu of options for the user. I can do that with a standard action. Now, that's pretty good, but Captivate goes even further in introducing us to conditional actions. So what is a conditional action? Well, it basically says, I'll perform one or more actions if something, if a certain condition can be met. Let's say I will only do this if the user gets a question correct. So if I see that question has been marked correct, then I can perform these actions. Otherwise, I'll, I might do something else. So if you are from a programming background, you may have heard the term if, then, else. And that's basically what a conditional action is. It says if this condition is, is true, then we'll perform the actions immediately underneath the condition, else I can specify some other actions. That's optional. You can, you can decide whether or not to have else actions, but they are available to you. Now that would have been great just on its own, that Captivate allowed you to have that, a conditional action. But Adobe went even further. They said, you've not just got one block of decisions there that you can do, you have multiple decisions that you can add to this project. So here you've got three of them listed up here, and when you switch between them, they can um, show or hide different actions for you. One after the other, those decisions will be executed and any relevant actions that should be performed based on those decisions will be done. If I just call up one of these particular conditional actions here for you, uh, to give you some idea of how sophisticated these can be. So here I have one that sets up the menu slide in this particular project. Notice that I've named all of these decision blocks and if I scroll to the right, I go through them, they change according to the decisions that are being performed here. And I have created interactions at times that have 20 or 30 decisions that are performed this way. That means you can create really sophisticated interactivity using conditional actions and variables in Adobe Captivate. And that would be great. However, Captivate has offered even more from that. What if I said, well, these are good, standard actions, conditional actions are good, but then I sometimes want to reuse the same action, but just change one little part of it. Can I do that? Yes, you can. You do that with shared actions. Now, a shared action becomes like a template. So if I take, for instance, one of these actions here, I have very simple conditional action, and I want to reuse this action, but just change something about it each time. I can save it as a shared action, and now some parts are grayed out. I can't change those parts, but I can change this one down here which maybe is the slide that it jumps to. So that makes the shared action act a little bit like a template that I can use to create other actions or execute other actions. The good thing about shared actions as well is that I can transport those actions from one project to another. They get saved in the project's library, and then when uh, I'm, I need them in another project, I can export them. They become a separate file to the Captivate project, and then I can import them into a different Captivate project altogether. Additionally, you can actually take a whole slide from Captivate and copy it, paste it into a different project, and you might have some sophisticated interactivity on that slide that involves actions and variables and certain objects. All of, not only does the slide and all the objects go with it, but all the variables and the advanced actions that you've created are also transported over. So that should give you a, a fairly general top-down look at the components of Captivate's interactivity. Let's just recap. We have actions, single actions, you can perform them. We need an event to trigger the action, so we look for things like slide events and object events and quiz events so that they can make these actions happen. But then we also want to store values results of things and track what's happening in the project. So we use variables for that. And we don't only, we're not limited to just performing one of action according to one event. We can have one event trigger multiple actions in a standard action. We can also 
use variables in combination with those multiple actions to form a condition and say if the variable equals this or if this set of circumstances is correct then we perform these actions otherwise we might do something different and we can stack those decisions up in a conditional action. We can save an action that's very useful as a shared action, save that and transport it, export it out of one project into another. So this is where Captivate gets really, really powerful. And I think it's what separates Captivate from any of the other competitors that are really out there. In the following modules to this one, we're going to examine each of these building blocks in more detail and show how you can use them in specific circumstances. Thank you.